Hey everybody, hope you're doing well today. It's Eric from the MMG. Today I'm going to show you how to install Steam CMD, which is Steam's tool for hosting dedicated servers. It's a very easy to use tool and I'm going to walk you through the basic steps of getting it installed and then looking and picking a game that you want to host a dedicated server for. But first, let's talk about our sponsor, Pine Hosting. They have some incredible deals on servers. You can rent your own dedicated host. You can rent a single game server if you just want to keep it simple. Whatever you want. They're all high performance, super easy to use, and very affordable prices. They have global locations all over the world. Premium protection against DDoS attacks. Everything you could want is here. And it's all fantastically priced. If you look at the dedicated server host, maybe you want to change games every week with your crew this allows you to do this this is your very own dedicated server you could pop steam cmd on it and switch out the game or whatever you want to do with it you can switch out games every day you can probably host multiple games on this with with ease so that's a great option then they also have these dedicated games if you just want a rust server pill world Valheim, arc whatever you want and shrouded they have it here at one simple low price and this is going to make things really easy for you to host and share with your friends and just basically have fun and play the game you want and not worrying about hosting at your own home PC. We've all done it. We all run into issues. It can be frustrating. If, if you hit that brick wall and you, you're just stuck, please stop banging your head on the wall. Just rent from Pine Hosting and make it easy. And to sweeten the deal, Pine Hosting has gave me a promotional co code. Just use MMG to validate that code. You're going to get 30% off your order. What a steal. The link for this will be in the video description check them out all right let's get back to installing steam cmd first thing you need to do is go to google type in steam cmd hit enter it's going to be this valve link right here developervalvesoftware.com click on that you're going to see it at the very top option right here it says download steam cmd you can do it for windows or linux we're on a windows machine there is also mac os we're going to do it on windows though so we're going to download windows click on that It'll say download Steam for Windows right here. And there's a little one icon. You want to click on that to actually download it. And then it'll download. It'll go into a folder. All right, so when you get that download, you just need to go to wherever your files downloads. Most people, it's just going to be in your downloads folder here uh, under your, your desktop icon right here if you look on your file explorers. Um, but where it's wherever your browser saves it. You may have set it to a default location. So just go wherever it's at. And we're going to actually want to right-click on it and hit Extract All. Now you do want to be careful where you put it because we're going to actually execute it from there and it's going to download the Steam CMD files. So you obviously kind of want to put it somewhere where you have a lot of room, extra room. And if you have an SSD, that's going to be ideal for hosting servers off of. I have an SSD drive here. I'm going to actually right click on it, hit new and create a brand new folder. I'm going to call it Steam CMD. And this is where I'm going to actually ex uh, extract these files. So I'm going to hit selected folder. There now it shows an icon there. We're going to hit extract. Once it's extracted, it should open the folder. If not, you may have to navigate to it to where you extracted it from. And you're going to run this steam, steamcmd.exe just like this. It's going to open another command prompt for you. It's going to actually download all the files that it needs to execute steamcmd. So you can see it's doing it now. Depending on your connection speed, it could take a little bit of time, but it's not too big, so it shouldn't take long, even on slower connections. Um, and this is <clears throat> going to stop, stop at a prompt like this. You just need to type in exit. And now when you look at that same folder, you can see all the files that you downloaded. And these are the basic files for Steam CMD. All right, and so this is this is what you want to see when you're here. Now all you have to do is uh, launch it. For most games, you're going to be able to execute what you want by doing the login anonymous. So log type you want to type in login space anonymous. Hit enter. It's going to log you in. Now some games where they require you to own it, it's going to say you don't have a subscription if you don't you're going to have to log in with your actual steam ID. So you would type in login and then, you know, your say your steam ID was logic bomb. You're going to hit enter. So log in logic bomb. It's going to prompt you. Okay. Logic bomb. I'm logging you in. Please enter your password. Now when you type in your password for your account, it's not going to look like it's doing anything. That's normal. It hides your password. So it is actually typing in your password. So you want to make sure you get it right. And when you get it typed in, then you want to hit enter again. Now, I didn't enter in my actual password because Logic Bomb is actually not my username on here. And so you see it failed, individual, uh, invalid password. But that's how you can log into your Steam account that actually owns the game. Some, some servers, some CMDB servers require you to actually own the game before you can host a server. Most do not, which is awesome, but some do. So if when you're trying this and you're doing uh, login anonymous like I did, 
and it, it does that and it says no subscription found, that means you have to actually log into an account that actually owns the game before you can even host the file. Okay, logged us in, now we're good. Now the next step is we're gonna actually download the, the game that we want to install. And so if you looked, steamdb.info, which I'll put a link in the video description below, is where you wanna go. This is gonna have everything you want and hit, you're gonna be at the page that looks like this. Then what you want to do is you want to search for tools. Just type in uh, Conan, for instance. Conan Exiles, very popular server. And I actually have a video dedicated to making a server for this on this channel if you want to do that game. But once you get that done, what you really want to get to is app type. You want to hit tool and hit search. And it's going to show you every server on Steam that you can download. They're all listed under tool. So hit like an Icarus dedicated server right here. What you really want out of this is the ID number. So say we wanted to do a, what's another popular server for me? Uh, satisfactory. Let's say we want to do a satisfactory server. Here is the satisfactory dedicated server ID number right here. See it? 1690800. So what you do is you just want to memorize that, write it down, move it over to your other screen, however you want to handle it, and go back to your command prompt here and you're going to type in app app underscore update and then space and then that ID number. So it was 1690800, and I'm gonna hit enter, and it's gonna actually start downloading the files for the server itself. And this could take a while depending on how big the server files are, your connection speed, etc., etc. Once it actually finishes downloading, then it'll actually verify the files, um, which usually goes a lot faster. It's just validating basically that it downloaded all the files correctly. Now we have it done. Success. App update fully installed. You should be back at the command prompt. You just need to type in exit. And now you should, you know, go back to your folder that you installed all this in, and you're going to have a Steam Apps folder now. This is where all your servers are going to get installed, unless you force it to a different location. But go into Steam Apps, then go into Common. There's our satisfactory dedicated server that we just downloaded. All right, now once you get this installed and you're good to go, you should see all the server files. There should be a, a config file somewhere where you can actually modify the server files. There's going to be an exe where you actually run the server from itself. But every game does it differently. Every game, some of them you have to run headless, so you have to actually create a .bat file to execute the exe to run it uh, properly. But they're all very different. So you know this is going to where you're going to have to do your own research to figure it out exactly how you what you need to do to modify this to make it your server. Some of them are as simple as just running the EXE and it does it all for you. But that's kind of rare to be honest. Most of them take a little bit of legwork on your part to get it figured out. Now I've done a bunch, I think I had over 50 dedicated server videos on our channel for specific games. So if there's something you're looking for and you're having trouble, make sure you search our channel. I may have done a video that has already showed you how to do it and it'll help you out. All right, thanks for watching the video. Please don't forget to, forget to give us a thumbs up and have yourself a great day.